Uh, so I'll just start off with a round of introductions since there's a few people who uh, don't know me and vice versa. Um, also, I should apologize. I've already fooled uh, one of you. Um, I am not, in fact, Lee. I am still using his login credentials for the Zoom meetings. Um, uh, my name is Timothy Hill. I'm a technical standards, technical standard, no, data standards and technical lead for the Open Data Insti uh, Institute uh, for Open Active now. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'll need to reset all of the invitations to, to my own Zoom account, so I've been masquerading for a while now. Uh, but yes, I am Timothy Hill. Um, so if we could just go around and have other people introduce themselves, that would be great. Uh, starting with uh, Paul, I guess, you're next on my screen. Uh, Paul Morgan, lead developer in marketing at Canal and River Trust. Um, looks like Matt is up next, Matt Coxhead. Yeah, it's, uh, Matt Coxhead, uh, developer at Participant UK. Um, so we provide a, a booking system to a number of organizations. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, Siv. Uh, hi, I'm Siv. I'm a developer at IMIN. Fantastic. And uh, Tom? Yeah, sorry, it was me. Uh, you fooled. I didn't look at the screen for answering you, so sorry. <laughs> you don't look like Lee. Um, uh, yeah, Tom, Tom Vian from Innovatize. Um, it's a random marketing app for leisure centers and gyms. Gotcha. And last of all, Nick. It needs no instructions. <laughs> 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 um, infamous at this point, yeah. Uh, so Nick Evans, uh, technical engagement lead for the Open Active project in the ODI. Okay, fantastic. And uh, before we kick off, um, I'll just uh, start with a slight apology. Um, I still have not uh, shared the notes or the video from the last meeting. I will make sure that I do that and this one on Friday, so you can all uh, catch up with where we are. Um, so without further ado, I will share uh, the presentation with you. Uh, it's to some extent uh, a little bit open-ended today. Uh, however, I think we want to look at the um, opportunity modeling spec and in particular, um, the difficulty level I think is probably one of the meatier um, topics to look at. Can everybody see my screen now? You should be seeing yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so we've gone through introductions. So difficulty level, this is an issue. Um, yep, hello. Yep. There we go. Um, this is issue number 82 on the modeling opportunity data um, discussion and it's an interesting one uh, because we've got, I think, pretty divergent views, really, uh, and a number of alternatives on the table. And it might be good to narrow the, either narrow those down a little bit or at least get some more clarity around the issues that each of the different approaches is trying to address. Um, so I'm just going to go to that repo now. Um, and I'll paste the link into the chat for those of you who don't have the slides up here. Sorry. Um, there we go, we should have the link. Um, so there's a fair bit of discussion on that. I'll go back to sharing the screen. Um, so there seems to be pretty widespread agreement that this is in fact a desirable um, thing to have. The question is really about execution. Um, so the initial proposal is really quite a simple one, which I think is pretty close to something that's already been implemented on some platforms, which is simply a tripartite division into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Um, with uh, an additional level proposed for open to all. So essentially no difficulty level or unrated. Um, however, then we get the idea of a numerical division uh, to accommodate some more granularity there. So zero to 100, for instance. Um, and then scrolling down, uh, I think we get up to 
uh, a proposal sort of based on, on font weight uh, from web standards running between uh, zero and a thousand, I guess, or is there no upper bound on this? Um, yeah, I think it's a thousand, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, so essentially a very, very expanded range. Um, a comment uh, from uh, Tri Tag Rugby via Nick um, then points out that there's sometimes a useful distinction between somebody who's a beginner, so that's somebody who doesn't have a great deal of skill in a particular area, and somebody who's got really no experience at all, and so therefore needs some basic training even to participate in the first place. So um, in something like, uh, I don't know, yoga, I suppose you can just pitch up and, and follow the instructions most of the time. Uh, but in the case of rugby, they want you to show up and actually get some instruction first before you start participating. Um, so those were the suggestions on the ground as of this morning. Uh, I then added my own comments, which were looking at, I suppose, what might be considered edge cases. Um, but they pop to mind fairly readily, which makes me think that actually they're not so close to the edge after all. Um, so if you think about something like martial arts, uh, they've got a very fine-grained difficulty level distinction. Um, Googling around, I found a couple of yoga classes that use much more fine-grained distinctions. Um, so this raises the possibility that... Um, A range might not be, a numerical range might not be what we need to capture this quite, in that it's not clear that, for instance, um, a white belt is equal to a 50 and a yellow belt is equal to a 100. There might be a more um, nuanced description of, of that. Um, so more than just that a yellow is, I don't know, twice as hard as a white belt, but there will be particular skills or something you have to have mastered to attain that level. Um, so I made a, a more a complex proposal underneath saying that we need fields that capture, um, are more granular with regard to um, the level description that have got some kind of definition attached to them uh, that have a link to the organization that has defined that where that's applicable and possibly a URL for an unpacking of what that description means. So. Uh, my comment from this morning is really uh, making the problem much, much more complex, I think. Um, and then there was an additional comment that emerged from discussion at the ODI earlier in the day, um, which is that there's some kind of conflation with age ranges here, so that you often get beginner's courses that are specifically aimed at children. So the example I gave there is snorkeling. Uh, which has got something called, I believe, the Dolphin Club, which is for children who have learned how to snorkel. You cannot be an adult dolphin. Um, you can be an adult beginner, but then you would take a, a different range of classes and have a different certification for that. Um, so the extent to which we consider that a separate concern or how we capture that alongside difficulty is kind of an open question. Um, Tim, just thinking, uh, it's slightly off ball, but just thinking about swimming lessons, sorry, it's Tom here. Um, Typically, swimming lessons uh, come under, particularly children's swimming lessons, they have things like ducklings, swans, ugly ducklings, um, and they're, they're, they're not linear in any way, shape or form. Generally, it's the bigger the animal, the, the, the later the level. Um, but uh, particularly, uh, that doesn't really fit into the numeric model either. Right, okay, yeah. Right, yeah, it is, I guess that's, that's an interesting one. It's, um... It's a progression, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, there's there's no way that you get to I don't know orca without having been a duckling at some point. Um, and just saying one is an eight hundred and one is a two hundred doesn't doesn't capture that kind of sequential uh, variation. Yeah, um, which is a little bit like belts in the martial arts, right? That uh, you know you have to be a white before you're a yellow, and you have to be a yellow before you're an orange, and so on and so forth. Um, but but don't they all pertain to? A getting some sort of experience or level. So with the karate, say for example, you have to learn a certain number of punches and kicks before you progress to the next belt. With swimming, um, would the correlation be perhaps the amount of length that can be swum? So a duckling can only do, say, I don't know, 25 meters, whereas uh, 
and a goose or whatever can do 200 meters. So there's this attainable, there is something measure, measurable because mm. otherwise these, these organizations wouldn't be able to award the individual a certain status, would they? Mm -hmm. So p perhaps with the swimming, to take, go back to with the, the ducklings uh, and the other things is, you can get sort of a numeric uh, comparator because you could say, well, 100 is a duckling because they can only do, and that equates to, they can do 25 meters un unaided or whatever. I, don't, I mean, I don't know because obviously I don't do the swimming things, but um, the other thing I was thinking though, um, just to go off this a little bit, is that you've got, um, in terms of difficulty level, you've also got like sort of contained area activities versus um, wide ranging. So for example, um, running, walking, that sort of thing. You could go all, all over the shop, basically. You can go all over the countryside and there's different um, complexities contained within that, whereas when you're in a swimming pool, when you're in a dojo, it's to a degree it's confined, isn't it? It's a confined space, or even a rugby pitch. You're you're working within a certain certain area, and you've got certain skills that you you can attain, you can master. You can you know you learn how to tackle in rugby, you learn how to pass the ball, you learn how to kick, you learn how to set up for a scrum or for a line uh, a line a line in, in throwing. Sorry. So it's it's I know it's quantifying those, and I'm I'm just wondering whether we can whether that can actually be pushed to the organisation that's doing the implementations themselves. So without us getting too prescriptive, we could work to some sort of numeric model and then allow the, the consuming or the publishing uh, agency to define those levels or they can supply those levels with it, those definitions with it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just to, um, to add on to that. So basically in our system, you can define uh, what a level is, um, but obviously as we have number of different organizations um, at the moment it's just an open text field mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of our football customers or probably all of them have uh, age groups so that could range from under six to under 12 um, so they'll just create a different level for each of those um, but then we have judo customers as well so the levels would be the the different belts so um, I guess it it's going to vary a lot depending on exactly what sport is is being offered mm -hmm. so but your system as i understand it you've got that text box so they can quantify what they they define as somebody who's a beginner somebody who's an intermediate and somebody who's advanced yeah yeah i mean I, yeah it's, at, at the moment it's just an open it's just a text box you're, you're just putting text in so that that level can be whatever you want it to be so I guess in theory you could just put beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, but yeah, most of them will just put under twelve, under thirteen, under fourteen, and so on. So, but you can you can mix and match these levels. So. Right. Okay. And, and so what that means on the front end is that somebody looking at a web page for a particular activity, they might see information saying this is for twelve-year-olds, or they might see information saying this is for green belts. Yeah. Or, you know, right. It could just be you know, whatever you've got. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that's interesting because age, yeah, age is not necessarily a proxy for skill, right? Um, I mean, is it the case that people run football sessions for, you know, um, serious 16-year-old players as opposed to amateur or <laughs> just not very good at football 16-year-olds? Um, is that a distinction that's ever drawn? I, I guess um, so. one of our activity providers that have... Uh, I think it's uh, three different levels, uh, different age ranges. So I guess depending on your age will kind of depend on your level. Um, so that's how they differentiate these, their classes. Mm -hmm. So even if you're an under six, but you're playing at the level of a, an under eight, you'd still be categorized as the under six because of your age. Right, right, okay, yeah. So essentially, essentially the, the age range Basically, difficulty level then doesn't sort of, it's understood as difficulty level, but in fact, difficulty is not really applied. Age no, is no. at a certain point and then. Yeah, yeah. Right, I assume that if there's a really good player, they could be bumped up to the older kids. Uh, I guess that'd be uh, up to the organizer. Um, uh, I'm not too sure how they how to do that. I think usually they just keep them the same age group. Um, right. Yeah, I guess that'd be up to them, I guess. 
guess there's an element of physical protection there as well because if you've got like a six-year-old up against say a ten-year-old you know going yeah, exactly. tackles that sort of thing it, it's it's keeping them safe that way yeah so keeping them in the same age group so they're all at the sort of same physical ability because I, mean, I guess if you've got an old child they can play for a lot longer whereas someone a bit younger may need more breaks that sort of thing more guidance so right okay so tim is is the purpose for the conversation really to get the linear scale so from a user experience point of view you can serve it up as as a sliding scale um which works very well for beginner advanced intermediate or whatever uh, but works less so for for almost categories or or things that you get by being able to tick stuff off um are we is is it a case of fitting the data so that we can provide a better user experience at the end of the day um as opposed to just having a, a blank text field yeah i mean i think it's i think what it is is, it is discoverability really um and then maybe nuanced or made more urgent in this case by the question of appropriateness that ideally people want to be able to compare like with like as much as they can right so we're aggregating a bunch of data um and consumers are using that presumably they're going to want to know you know how how difficult something is whether how appropriate something is for themselves or for whoever they're they're um uh book making the booking for um so they want to be able to compare like with like in that way and know that the event is going to be suitable for them. Um, so the, the, I guess the tension is between being able to scan a page and saying, well, you know, I'm not very experienced at judo or whatever, therefore I want easy. Um, and having a fine drained sense of whether easy means, you know, I've got a yellow belt, so I've got some experience, whether it means I've never done anything before and I'm looking for lessons or whether it means, I've got an eight-year-old who's mad for judo, but you know, uh, she's eight year old, <laughs> eight years old. So, um, you know, accommodation is going to have to be made. So it's about, yeah, supporting supporting discoverability in and knowing what it is both that people want to know and what they need to know. Um, and I, this seems like a bit of a, a bit of a rock, actually, that. Um, you need to know whether something is child appropriate. Um, I suppose first and foremost, um, it's tempting to think of that as actually a separate concern to say, well, actually we've got a field for uh, minimum age and maximum age. That's, that's correct, isn't it, Nick? Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's, yeah. How, that's how we're doing age right now. Um, so it should be easy to filter and just say, you know, I've got a 12 year old, so therefore I'm going to only look for things for 12 year olds. Um, and then, Sorry, it's, um, it's Pete from Clubstock here. I just want to very quickly jump in. Um, in the tennis space, we absolutely have beginner advanced intermediate courses for children, for adults, completely separate from the, the age categorization. And um, across the, the Clubstock platform, we have even different age ranges so um you know some of the running courses will be 8 to 12 other sports are interested in 8 to 16 year olds and stuff so i think age is something that would definitely be separate from levels mm -hmm. um i see level is something that quite often at least in our experience um, coaches and providers are offering all levels to all age ranges um, independent of how old they are, it's, it's that, that's a completely separate concern. Okay, right. So those are sort of uh, orthogonal, as we say. Um, right, separate separate concerns. But in other areas, the two are conflated. Um, so they do have to be separable. Clearly, then. Um, I guess the question is. Um, in in the case where we have no where where we have one text box that says difficulty level and somebody enters or somebody you know assumes well okay 12 year old eight year old means that it's beginners sort of by default 
um, what do we do with that? If somebody's just got a free text box saying difficulty level and they enter children, um, do we take that as a proxy for easy? Do we take that as no data supplied? Well, maybe, um, sorry, Tim, but maybe it's worth reframing this uh, slightly around. Um, so if there's a search, and actually it might be something Siv can speak to, if there's a search which you're doing over lots of different types of data, I guess that's from that point of view. Um, we, that's where you have lots of different things, which might be one's football, one's taekwondo, one's rugby, in one list. And if you're filtering that based on uh, beginner or intermediate, I don't know, whatever it is, I guess that's the question is what, because practically if this is about discovery, it's about filtering because otherwise we just put some free text in and everyone would look at the free text and go, oh, that's what, that's for me. And if it doesn't matter what sport it is, because you just look, you, we don't need it to be machine readable. The only reason you need to be machine readable and comparable is so that you can do a filter across a wide range of activities. Um, so if you've got British triathlon, you can get something from run together and you can get something that's on the go try website and you can say, well, these are both pitched at beginner triathletes or whatever. So beginners run and a beginner, um, uh, sprint triathlon or something um, but practically does that make sense I guess is the question because you know you don't ju just rock up to a sprint triathlon do you, you probably do a go try event or something first um, so I, I, I guess I, you know go on sorry um, I, I jumped in a little bit later I tried to get here for the start um, is this following on from the levels Nick the the kind of font based level proposal that I, I put in the GitHub. Yeah, sorry, Pete, totally. You, the, you, the, the only bit you missed before you joined, because I saw your number pop up and I was going to yeah. prompt, but yeah, I can't message you because you're not on the thing. Uh, we've got the yeah. issue in front of us and we've just gone through every, uh, every item in that issue, issue, uh, issue number 83, including your, um, the, the font proposal, which was in there. Um, yeah. Because I was going to say, as far as machine readability goes, if if the data gets stored and you know presented to an API at that kind of font, the, the hundred kind of ranges, that that allows the, the front end and the back end to ignore kind of free text. It, it stops being free text. It becomes a machine readable value. So you can you can have a, an aggregator sitting there and it classifies beginner as you know one to four hundred, and then it will just find anyone that has ranked their course or their um, event. As a, a 200, that that will fall in that range, um, and there's no there's no worrying about um, you know someone called a beginner, someone called it children's. It, it just takes that whole free text out of the equation, and then age ranges can be a completely separate filter. It, uh, I'm not quite sure why we're still concerned about free text there. I guess that's a bit I'm missing. <laughs> Um, I, I guess I like the, the free text bit because it allows you to qualify what you define as a beginner. So to take, although I liked your idea about the font weight thing, I think that the problem with it is is that different organisations will have um, different ranges even within those those fonts, uh, within those um, bar those breakdowns there, and being yep. able to give um, an attribute of you know some text to say, okay, this is who we are, this is how we define it, a a beginner. Or this is how we define an intermediate. It, it gives a bit of bit of better quantity. So when you talk to, or when we look at Nick's um, example of searching searching over that data and filtering it, when somebody gets the results back, you can then quantify to them that actually the beginner on there is probably um, say like an in intermediate or or a, a lower intermediate on this on this uh, this data set here. It, it's it's that I don't think it's quite so black and white of marrying them all up. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, so would would we then perhaps benefit from treating that as additional metadata and, and not actually treating that as the machine readable part? So when someone does do the search uh, or, or do a filter, they can search for those things at the low end and then there's that, an additional piece that, as you said, it, it quantifies what that difficulty means on a particular platform. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, yeah, yeah. Could I just prompt um, um, maybe uh, Tom and Siv specifically on, I know you're both using data, uh, what, what your experience as for a data user perspective, you would like, you know, because you're obviously going to be doing machine reading, machine reading of the machine readable um, if you're pulling in data from, from different sources and, um, and making that available in the user interface, um, what kind of things that you're looking at? 
Sure, yeah. Um, currently, we have uh, we only have three levels. We have beginner, intermediate, uh, advanced, I think, top of my head, or, you know, synonyms for those three words. But we've only got three ranges and we map all the data coming through to those three buckets. Um, in terms of where the age filters um, fall into this, uh, we I'm not sure anyone's going to get confused if they see a if they're looking for a beginner session and they see a a children's session that is also beginner. I'm not sure anyone's going to get confused about oh well is this a beginner for a child or is this a beginner for an adult because it's very obvious that that thing is for a child. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not sure uh, how how age ranges fall into how how closely tied age ranges and level need to be. Um, anyone doing filtering for, on, on our side in terms of discovery, if they want junior sessions, they'll, they'll click, you know, 12 to 18 or whatever. And then there'll also be the, the radio buttons or button checkboxes for whatever level um, they want and they can see it through there. So uh, that that's where we are. We've got three, We've got those three own for you know simplicity's sake. It's obvious what they mean. There's only three of them, so you don't need to. You don't want the user to be confused by oh, am I a beginner intermediate or am I an intermediate beginner or you know that sort of level. Um, I, I certainly don't think a user, a user should be. They won't know what a 400 out of a thousand is. And they won't know what the difference to. A, an 800 or a 600 is. And I don't think the proposal here is to pass that decision on to the user anyway. But um, No, absolutely. Right, it would be a mapping for us to do. But, um, yeah, we've, we've stuck with three and all of our front end so far seem to be happy with three. Um, now, whether that's because people are sticking to what they know, I don't know. And change is difficult and change is scary. But uh, everyone so far seems to be happy with three. Okay. I think, um, well, there was a distinction I think that Nick pointed out via TriTag that there's a, there's a distinction, a sub-branch of, of, of easy or intermediate, um, of beginner, which is novice, which is no experience whatsoever. So you need some training to participate. Is that, but that, how is that treated in your system? Or is that just not a distinction that's made? Uh, so far, I think it's not a distinction that's made, and if that were to be made, uh, we hope that it'd be in the, in the description field of the, of the session, or that's something that we would add on in, into the description field if we knew beforehand that that was the case, that there is, there is that difference. Um, Right, so yeah, yeah. you filter on beginner and then you, you just and then listen to the user to say, okay, you know, what, what do they mean by that? Right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, maybe if it is in a description or a free, some free text field like the description or maybe a level free text field, depending on where we go with this, if there's a free text search on the search side of things, then they can click the beginner button and also search no experience or something. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, again, not, not, not sure if that, uh, that distinction between no experience and beginner has to be made. I think anyone looking for a no experience session will understand that they are not in the intermediate or advanced categories. Right, yeah. Um, I, suppose, I suppose the flip side might be... Um, they know that they're in the beginner category, but they don't realize that there's some training required. Um, like, so for instance, I don't know, the, the snorkeling example, right, where you get a certificate at the end of a training program saying, okay, now you're a beginner. You know, now, you can, now you can kind of swim unsupervised under such and such circumstances. Um, so before that, in a sense, you weren't even a beginner. Um, you were, you were, you were um, yeah, in training, I guess. Um, so I guess the danger would be you filter for beginner and then you see, oh, okay, there's a session between, I don't know, 7 and 8 p.m. I'll show up to that. And then, well, in fact, you do have some kind of requirement. Um, again, would, would that just be something that fits into the description field? Would that be 
yeah it, it sounds like maybe there is a, a case for uh additional information in the level mm -hmm. um and as an optional field um to say something like is that the best of both worlds maybe to have a type beginner name easygoing and then additional information and a free textbook saying oh you need you need to know the rules before you come so make sure you watch this video right right yeah yeah, yeah. I think uh, it, that all comes back again to, you know, you guys are mentioning there that you primarily work on three levels. I think in the, the GitHub discussion, the, the most common scenarios were three or four levels. Novice seems like a fourth level that's right at the bottom. Sometimes there's professional, which is one extra right at the, the top end as well. So it does seem like there is, in general, three to four primary levels that people use and that, that's what we're working with um, but that's where the the idea of you know the font weights or the just the the ranked system where it one system can say uh, you know I have three levels and there and, and if we define that one to four hundred is classified as beginner so we, we can define those broad kind of guidance for those levels but then it, it lets them go well actually in you know club spark for whatever reason we've got a, a partner that has decided that they want 10 levels um, we can translate that directly and we can have them come through and provide that to the you know all the providers and at the end of the day the, a, an aggregator or a search provider might only display three on their site but they will still at least have the the information there to say this is a slightly higher level you know it, it just opens up more possibilities you know, novice, for example, where you need training, that could be represented as a zero. It would still fall into the zero to 400 category. It would still fall in under beginner. We can add that extra metadata that adds that description about you need to do this before you can progress on. Um, but it, it just, it allows kind of, it removes the, the requirement for every single provider to only have three levels or only have four levels. And, you know, one provider decides it needs beginners or novices and the other provider is more targeted at professionals, so it needs that fourth one at the other end. It, it just removes any constraints or shortcomings around that um, because it leaves it up to the individual platforms to decide where their levels fit into the open data kind of view of levels. If I've got a professional course, well, open data says that seven to 900 is advanced so my professional course is probably a 900 and my advanced course is probably the 700 but if i need a novice or a you know a trainee that's probably going to be a zero instead of the 400 so i've still got those ranges to work with and i'll still have just like with font weights uh, the common font weights are 400 um 600 and 800 or something from memory there, there's still those standard values that most people use but in the few situations where a little bit more um, granularity is needed it still works because it's kind of expected in the specification there's no limitation such I guess my question is why the why the mapping is numerical um, because I mean to take the martial arts example I can imagine somebody saying okay well white belts and yellow belts are beginner and orange and whatever comes after orange um, you know are, are intermediate and then you know blue through black will be will be advanced um trying to come up with numbers for those feels like an extra step um, well that that's actually a perfect example because there you might map so white belt might be zero yellow belt might be 100 you map that onto the numbers and it gives you the ordering so it means that when they're you know maybe on the search aggregator they go sort by difficulty or something like that that's inherent in the, the levels so it's up to the provider again to decide you know these are where we feel maybe they crunch three or four different belts into the beginner range maybe they crunch you know all of their belts into the mid range it's up to them to decide but it gives you know martial arts is actually the perfect example where as far as levels go it's completely believable that they might want to have one level per belt so you could end up with you know, 10, 20 different belts, depending on the, the discipline. 
um, all represented at a level, all with a numeric value. It, it's really an arbitrary value within those kind of predefined ranges. It, no one's going to come along and say yellow belt has to be a 50. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's up to the provider to decide where they think that fits in the difficulty range. And it will let them group their kind of levels to say, these are our three beginner belts, these are our four intermediate belts, and these are our four advanced belts. And that's how we feel that they're distributed through a range of a thousand. It's, it's purely just for ordering. Um, and so that you have kind of that relative sense of difficulty between the different tiers. Well, I have a slight curveball to throw in, but before that, I know Tom, you were going to say something and then um, you got cut off in amongst the things. Um, no, that's fine. Um, the, <clears throat> uh, I was going to say, typically from what I've seen, although humans think of levels as being progressional, generally the systems are just flat. So they just have a level right, which is this, uh, it's not related to anything else, it's not higher or lower than anything else, it's here's a bit of text, here's a bit of description to it. Um, uh, that's generally been my experience from a technical point of view that what exists out there at the moment. Um, and actually I can see there, there is some benefits on that because it will fit into sort of any scenario, any set of data, the difficulty is just trying to filter and, and trying to grade it. So. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So, so building on the filtering, filtering and grading uh, point, I wonder whether, um, because I think what you were saying about um, um, Pete, what you were just previously saying about the uh, number, of the you know comparative across different belts and things like that, I completely see what you mean about the numbers being really useful there. Um, there's also a sense in which this specific activity you might want to standardise around. So, for example, let's say that in this is a real example. Let's say that, that um, Taekwondo England wanted to create a website with all the Taekwondo data on there. Now, all the Taekwondo publishers across many booking systems will need to publish their um, different classes and sessions um, with the various levels in there. Um, now, obviously, if, if one person starts typing yellow with capital letters and the other person, you know, all this kind of stuff goes on, um, we don't probably want to be do free, doing free text matching. And so maybe there's some, something useful about having, um, you know, a, a, something like a controlled vocabulary or something where you can, you can say this for my sport, I think these are the levels um, that then other people can, can, can jump on and use. So I, where I kind of get, ended up going to with that thought was, well, what if we just have people can publish um, controlled vocabularies around levels um, if they want to. So England in the triathlon, England, um, British Triathlon might have one and, and uh, British Ta and Taekwondo might have one, etc. Um, but those actually have a notation in there, um, which is the numeric value. And so you kind of have both. That means that we, are, we, we can allow for convergence within a particular sport where there's some level of agreement about what things mean so that when you've got an activity finder or something that is for a specific sport and people care about that, they can have some alignment. Um, but when you're just doing what, what Siv was describing and saying, I've got all the activities in the world in this search engine, I'm just going to have three categories of beginner, intermediate, advanced. I'm not going to try and filter on yellow because it doesn't mean anything if you're doing horse riding. Um, then, um, then you can do that because you can use the numbers to um, match between all the different vocabularies. I'm not sure if that's overcomplicating it, but it's my suggestion. Yeah, I, I think a vocab um, is a great idea. And I think the the big benefit of the, the numbering number grading behind it is that having the vocab out there is good doesn't mean that everyone is necessarily going to conform so having that number grading still gives you kind of a it's not the perfect scenario but it's um, you know it, it's a fallback at the end of the day and then if you do find that one of your providers is not conforming with with a, a published vocab perhaps the vocab wasn't published when they initially integrated then you can actually, you've got something to go back to them with and say, hey, you know, could you consider conforming with this established vocab um, for your discipline? Yeah, or, or indeed as an aid to matching, I suppose. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can do some preliminary analysis and say, yeah, it looks like this maps to this based on your difficulty rating and yeah, useful tool. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, 
one question that I've I've raised before. Um, historically, but I think it's true again with the novice distinction generally. Um, when it comes to certification, do we need anything more than the than a, a further description field um, saying, you know, you need to be certified for such and such? Um, would it be helpful to be more formal than that? So in the in the comment that I added this morning, I had sort of a field saying, you know, um, this is this is defined as difficulty X by such and such an organization who have defined more strictly what they need at this URL. So again, martial arts organizations, um, swimming. Um, I think Nick had an example earlier um, of of yeah, some kind of legally binding certification. Um, oh, are you thinking Paddy in the water and the uh, open water diving, maybe? Or yeah, something? yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah that you need to have some kind of qualification before you enter, you enter into an activity. Um, do we need to formalize that more or is that opening a, a horrible can of worms? Is that a, a level related thing or is that an event related thing? I'd almost see that as being a, a list of requirements for an individual event and it would be up to the providers to determine that in their system, you know, novice divers have to get the paddy qualification before they can progress to beginner level or whatever it is so they they could map that internally but it would be on the event level because then that opens it up as well to not just certifications maybe you need to bring certain equipment to a, a certain type of event which has nothing to do with the level and everything to do with the event so i, I feel that's more of a, an event thing than a or an activity thing than a um a level thing Right, okay, so that's the prerequisites. Um, yeah, uh, as a back end system, you might hang it off the levels. Um, but I think that the comment's still true uh, that it would come, you would want it to come out from a data, from an event level side of things. Okay, right, so those two concerns are just um, not, yeah, two concerns that are just separate from, from level are age and prerequisites, and that's, yeah, dealt with under a separate head. Okay, um, so it looks like we're moving to the idea of having some kind of controlled vocabulary, um, which would ultimately map onto a numeric scale along the lines of the font weight proposal. Um, if just extending out slightly further, uh, Tim, if you work and if somebody did just want a flat level, flat system, so there's just like, five or six things um, that are not necessarily hierarchical. Um, taking that number scale, could they all just put them on as one number? Uh, could, could there be a, uh, a number that's sort of uh, categorized for that? So if you push everything in a zero, then that means uh, no ranking as opposed to ranking between a thousand, uh, that sort of thing. I would actually say that you wouldn't push a value because zero might be considered again as that novice beginner um, uh, making the, the grading an optional value on the level might be the way to go in that scenario. Um, I think one thing that we'd benefit from is if you could describe how you would see that falling in under those aggregators that have, you know, beginner, advanced, um, and intermediate, what would the, the expected behavior be around that? Because if I search for intermediate, would I expect everything to show up if it hasn't got a grading? Um, would it just not work? Would it It'd be another option, ungraded or something like that. I get your question. It's a difficult one because it's the it's the data versus the the consuming and discovering it. Uh, two different ends yeah. at, at, at loggerheads here. Um, yeah, so I think that that really defines whether you go. All of our courses are going to be a four hundred or a five hundred. You know, right in the middle, intermediate level or we're just not going to provide the value and we expect our results to always show up, or we're not going to provide the value and we expect to only show up when people ask for ungraded sessions. There's kind of three different options there. Um, I think we should try and decide which one is the recommended approach so that the um, aggregators and the providers both know what the expected behavior is. I think the option of setting everything to 400 kind of is covered off here anyway. Um, so to me, it's a choice between the two of saying if something's ungraded, does it appear in everything 
or if it's ungraded, does it appear in nothing? Well, uh, in an ungraded only section. Yeah. Um, just uh, uh, in terms of uh, our, our customers, I'd probably say if, if it was ungraded, I'd probably want it to appear in the search, all searches regardless. Um, but that's just from understanding what our, our customers are sort of looking for. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same with other companies. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say that they'd want it to show on all searches. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking from your perspective, Matt, presumably if, if you've got football and all your customers independently entering free text uh, levels across thousands of customers, um, you're going to have to create an interface to allow them to map it to a, to a, to a value, a, a numeric value somehow, and they'll have to understand what that means. And there'll be a training yeah. element in there, um, all of which seems quite uh, a, lot of, yes. a lot of work. Yeah, so um, it'd probably be quite a bit of work, Aaron, to add in that extra numerical feature onto the existing functionality. I mean, it shouldn't be too long, but then it'd be informing the customers of that, getting them to get used to that. And I can imagine some just not bothering because they've already got all their levels created. So it'd just be extra work on their part. So they'd probably just not set it and then just expect their data to show regardless. Um, I mean, Maybe then the recommended solution should be that, that it will show ungraded things by default um, and perhaps it's uh, it's up to the aggregators to have the option to filter that data out. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, from our point of view, as an aggregator, we, uh, anything without a level, we don't show it when a level filter is on. So if you ask for beginner stuff, you'll only get beginner, I only get stuff that we know 100% is beginner. And yeah. um, okay. for ones that we get, uh, we, there are definitely sessions that have uh, difficulty level all, or um, hang on, I'll find the examples, um, all levels or mixed levels, or um, yeah, uh, all inclusive ones, we map to the all three of our levels. So there's also that option. Okay. Um, Maybe if it, if it's not set default, set it as all. Oh, I guess would be the solution for um for at least our customers. Although that might create a lot of a lot of noise because that that's then setting everything to everything, which means it yeah. devalues yeah. the filter. Yeah, and it's it's kind of the the old school no problem of yeah does. <laughs> From an auditing point of view and from a data quality control point of view, does does no data mean it's open to everybody, or does it mean you forgot to enter the field? Um, but actually, so, um, Pete, because you've got the same problem in the system you're talking about. I imagine you, you've probably imagined this in your head. But let's say you're going to do this in in Clubspark for all your yep. existing customers. How would you educate them in the mapping process, and how does that how does that practically work across the customers so they can start to put these numbers in? At the moment, um, so we wouldn't be exposing numbers to customers. We have, um, I believe, three levels at the moment. So it would just be a matter for us of mapping the three levels to where we feel they're appropriate. So we'd have beginner at you know, 200 or something, intermediate at 400 and advanced at 800 or whatever the recommendation comes out as. Um, and, and, you know, for us, that's a, a and transparent mapping to the customer. The other option that we've got, which I'm hesitant to, to put forward, but I'll do it anyway, um, is that the level is a range. So um, that covers, I think someone a second ago said that they had multi-level or split level courses. So if it is a range, then there is a definite distinction between naught to a thousand or no value. One of them is all and one of them is none. And they're, they're two different things, and that would be enable the aggregators to treat them separately, um, and, and allow the providers a little bit of control over. I want this to show up every time. Um, in the, I think it was football example a second ago, it sounded like they'd always want their courses showing up, so that would come through as a naught to a thousand range. Um, in the, you know, another example where a course is ungraded, and we want someone to specifically search for ungraded courses that would come through as an empty value and and that could be filtered at the front end uh, by aggregators if, if desired um, I think the schema 
.org and stuff, they support multiple types on most data types. So the flexibility between choosing a single value or the range um, does seem to be there in schema.org. So just to kind of to be EMD in this conversation, just as a throw another curveball in, because I know Kat and um, Shelley can be here today, but um, uh, in their world, they literally um, for a, for a Zumba class, they say this Zumba class is appropriate for beginner and intermediate, or intermediate and advanced, and it's it's three tick boxes in their um, in their interface. Actually, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing Pete, you could probably map it to what you're saying by just putting, if they tick, they can't, they can't not tick the middle box because that would break everything. Um, but if so, <laughs> it has to be, uh, or, which makes sense because I mean, who's going to run a class for beginners and advanced ninjas and not the people in the middle? I mean, just to be devil's advocate, you could have a sparring class where you said advanced students will take on the beginner students. So it's not outside the bounds of possibility. But, um, okay, yeah. would, would you grade that class? So I, I also just thought of the exact same thing where you do have the advanced levels um, training or, or sparring with, for example, the, the beginners. Would that be classified as a graded class? So would you treat that as a beginner's class or an advanced class or both? Or would you just say this is an ungraded class? And um, similarly, do you block it off to the intermediate level? Do you say if you're intermediate, you can't come? Or do you say if you're intermediate, you're going to be treated as the beginner, you're going to be sparring with an advanced person, not with a beginner person, because you know we don't want you to hurt the beginner. Um, I don't necessarily know that it's a, an exclusionary kind of range. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I, I, yeah I'm, just, um, I'm just wondering if it's a possibility we have to accommodate rather than one that's particularly common. Um, yeah. We, we, I just feel like as soon as we foreclose the possibility, of course, uh, somebody somewhere is going to um, come up. There's always going to be one exception to the rule. Yeah. Um, so that said, we've got three minutes left on the call. Um, and I think, I mean, it actually sounds like those, we're gathering momentum towards um, some kind of actionable conclusion. Um, I wonder if the next step would be uh, for a survey to go out getting views more widely about current practice um if we could get that out fairly quickly and pick this conversation up on the next call um i think we'd be actually 80 or 90 percent of the way towards having this part of the specification fleshed out quite nicely assuming that the survey didn't throw up any any ridiculous outliers um does that sound like it might be it might be beneficial to have like a question there that is, you know, what kind of gradings do you use in your system currently? And where would you, would you grade them on a numeric scale or are they just ad hoc as the, the football example was? Mm -hmm. That that could help also guide if everyone's using ungraded and there's only one system using the graded systems, um, then we might be overcomplicating things. Yeah, okay. Um... Let's move forward that way then. Um, as I say, I'll get the notes out in, in short order this time. Um, does anybody have any other pressing business they wish to raise before the end of the call? Okay, we're all thinking about uh, level edge cases, I guess. Um, <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm thinking about Matt's uh, Matt's system and how and um, what 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 uh, <laughs> would be involved. <laughs> and thinking about um, the conversation about how to prioritise that. <laughs> God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that? Um, do you think? I mean, just to, just as a final point on this, um, Matt, um, Matt, do you think that? I mean, is this viable, what we're proposing here? Or is it, I mean, is it the kind of thing, because I imagine we could go into the conversation and you could just go, well, this is just completely mental. There's no way we can have a, a, a little drag and drop interface where you can put, put a scale and then, you know, beginner, intermediate and advanced as, as colored ranges and they can drag and drop their 10 things into the range. I, I have no idea how it would look, but something. I mean, uh, it, it is quite a fairly big change. So it'll be quite a bit of work. Um, it just depends. I mean, because there's, there's so many way, different ways of doing it. Um, if you define it as uh, numerical or just as beginner, intermediate, advanced, or all, um, it's just doing it the best way. But um, uh, if, if we see what the surveys say and then 
talk about next week. Um, I'll have a think of as well um, between now and then as well of the the best way it would fit for for our system. But um, yeah. Okay, well then, in short order, uh, I guess we need to get that questionnaire out. And uh, yeah, see, I hope all of you in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you very much for joining the call and uh, for, um, yeah, for your contributions to it.